Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice today on the show. Michael Starr, singer of Steel Panther, who's got a new album out. Heavy Metal Rules on September 27th. Michael, what's going on, man? Oh, dude, just killing it right now in Southern California. Getting ready for our tour, upcoming tour, and the release of our brand new record, Heavy Metal Rules. Excited, dude. First things first, I heard the album, I really like it. What did you do different this time that you didn't do last time or vice versa? Well, we took a lot of time on this record because the whole record ended up getting deleted because Lexi Fox took the drive, the, the hard drives, the backup, and the original home after our sessions and he dropped it on the cement and oh, it geez. screwed up everything right so we we called our producer we said hey he dropped it we're getting it having you know we'll, he sent it in to get the data recovery and we said well let's just use the stuff that's in the cloud and he said it didn't go to the cloud because the internet wasn't working at the studio so we had to re-record all the vocals the, the bass and the uh guitars and the keyboards for the whole record so we re-recorded everything, and then after that, listening back to my voice, it sounded like there was something wrong with it. So I went to my voice doctor, and he looked at my voice and my vocal cords, and I had a, a polyp or, or a node on it. So we had to postpone the release of the record. I went, had surgery, had it cut out. I recovered 100% and even more, went back, re-recorded all the vocals again, and here we are talking about it. So this record is... We spent a lot of time on it, and we perfected every part of each song, and you're going to hear it and be blown away. It's killer. Looking back, maybe there was a couple of takes you did before that were better, or just as you progress, you said, you know what, we did it better this time around. Actually, it's a blessing. It was, actually, because I, you know, you every time we record a record, you know, we record the demo, and then we go into the re we record it for real with our producer, and then you live with it for the rest of your life. Well, yeah. this time we recorded it and we lived with it for about a month and then we had to re-record it. So I was able to really like, you know, challenge myself to, to make it better. And then when I had to get the surgery, when I came back, my voice was even stronger and it was easier to sing. So I think that this third time around made it, it was just singing those songs three times in the studio. You know, I don't know if you know this, but when you record a song vocally, you're not just singing each part once. You're singing it like 50 times, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I sang each song about, you know, 150 times. So what you're hearing is the accumulation of me really getting deep and emotional with the tracks. And I think it, it reflects that. We're such a politically correct world. And I know you get this asked this question so much. But do you think Steel Panther is a, is a result or a backlash or a sort of, small revolution against the political correct society that we live in? I mean, we're living in the most politically correct society of, of any generation. Do you think that you guys are like the first wave of, you know what, the heck with this PC stuff? You know, we've always been that, you know, I think that now, you know, stuff is changing and it's becoming more PC, but you know, we started 20 years ago. So this is something that we've always done. And the only thing that's different for us, as a band, which separates us from other bands, is we sing about the same thing and we don't give a fuck what people think. And I think that people can appreciate our stance and freedom of speech and, able, and being able to not only maintain our career, but continue on. And, you know, people kind of this out even on their second record. And they said, oh, they won't be around much longer. They're just a parody band. They, you know, we hear the same thing all the time. Every record we put out, oh, they're repeating themselves. Oh, this is not good. Oh, it's not good. But we keep getting more fans and more fans and more fans. So, you know, the people that don't like us, I, I appreciate them because it gives us the drive to continue on to prove them wrong. I think the people who, I think the reason why you're getting so many fans is because people are fed up with the PC society that we live in and they just want to just let go, right? Yeah, yeah, man. We sell happy. You're we the first wave. Time. You're the first wave, and I think there's going to be more of this. I'll take it, dude. 
<laughs> I'll take it. And I think that we do, I think we do it responsibly. You know, it's not like we're doing it just to get attention. We do it because this is what we've always done. And you we're know, not like a flash in the pan where, oh, let's get everyone freaked out about something we're saying. We don't even try to do that. It yeah. just happens. Yeah. You know what? But then again, you know, I'm listening to the whole album. It's, you know, it's Steel Panther style, right? And then I ain't buying what you're selling. I'm going, wait a second. These guys are getting deep here. Of course, there's a little twist, you know, a few of the lyrics, but have you well, ever... think about this. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, you know, I, I'm not a young dude anymore. I'm 54 years old. Pretty yeah. soon, I'll be a senior citizen getting the 10% discount at Denny's. <laughs> and after that, I'm going to I'm gonna get uh, my Social Security, if it's even there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you, know, you don't think about that shit when you're living with your mom, you know? After I moved out when I was 49, I realized, you know, you know the world... The world needs Steel Panther. It People does. need to laugh. They need to enjoy themselves. But also there's, you know, we're not like idiots. We know what's going on around us and we're singing about it. And I ain't buying what you're selling. You know, like the 80s bands, you know, they suddenly they went grunge and then concept albums. Would Steel Panther ever do a concept album? And what theme would that be? You know, we, we've always talked about wanting to do that because Queensryche is a is one of our influences, and I know you probably can't tell, but they are. You got the and chops. So you guys got the chops. It, you know? you... Well, thank you. I, that's a really huge compliment. And, you know, Pink Floyd, you know, The Wall, that was a big influence on me when I was younger. The concept record seems like a great idea. It's just, it's not easy to do. So I don't know what the concept would be. I, I feel like most of our records are, we talk about different ways to get high and fuck bitches. And I think that that concept is universal for everybody because everybody wants to get high and everybody wants to party and everyone wants to have a good time and everybody has like sex either with a girl or a guy. Yeah. Do you ever lose track of, you know, who you are with your character? Like you wake up one day and, you know, that happens to uh, stand-up comedians, right? They, they have a persona on stage and then they come off stage and suddenly they become that person or vice versa, right? Well, you know, I... I'm the same guy on stage that I am off stage. I like, that's the thing I think that attract people to Steel Panther is it's organic. It's not fake. The whole reason why we started doing what we we're doing is because when we put us together as a band and we started talking to the audience, we just, you know, we want to make them laugh and have fun. It just came naturally because that's what we do backstage. And what we do is we write about our experiences in a, in a funny way because some of the stuff like you, you don't normally sing about, you know, like there's a song called I'm not your bitch on a new record. And it's about probably every married guy in the world and they can relate to it <laughs> or every married girl. You know I mean? It's the same thing. You, you, you don't like some girls can go, you don't expect me to make dinner for you. Motherfucker, make your own dinner. <laughs> I'm not your bitch. Hey, uh, any thoughts of passing of a Rick Ocasek of the cars, you know, eighties icon, you guys like an eighties hair band. I mean, it, same era. It's a bummer. I mean, Eddie Money and now Rick Ocasek, it's just, it sucks. You know, and I, I can't help to think of my own mortality, you know, when you hear somebody that influenced you when you were younger passing away. But, you know, I, I you know, God forbid when Steven Tyler passed away, it just keeps getting closer and closer to, you know, my own mortality. And it's just, a, it's a bummer. But thankfully, you know, he has a body of work they both do that people still listen to and can appreciate kind of like Tom Petty, you know, the bummer he's gone, but thankfully he leaves his legacy and major influence across the whole music industry. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite hair metal, hair band metal or hair metal singer of all time? David Lee Roth, man. Wow. Can't go wrong with Dave. Diamond Dave. Diamond Dave. 78 Great. to 84. You can't beat it. There's, there's uh, no showman like them. I mean, that's another band that really influenced me live. I went and saw them play when I was super young on the second record. And just listening and talk to the crowd, he made people laugh. He made people, you know, emotional. And he looked killer on stage. And Eddie Van Halen just shredded. The band was amazing. And uh, that's my main influence is Van fucking Halen. And I mean, a lot of people don't know or may know that you were in a, in a Van Halen tribute band before Steel Panther. Uh, 
what was that like? I mean, what was that? It was it was it a, people really gravitated toward it. Uh, they, people, there was a real need for that type of music. Yeah, you know, there was uh, one tribute band that was out here in L.A. called uh, I think they're called Wild Child, and they were a Doors tribute. They were the only tribute. And uh, I had a, I had a guitar player friend that said, "Hey, man, we should do a Van Halen tribute." And I was like, "All right." So we started doing the Van Halen tribute and that's the first time I ever got paid to play a show and I'll never forget it, you know? And, and that was at the time when, uh, grunge had just started it was around 90, 94 or something like that. Yeah. Grunge had completely taken over heavy metal was dead. So there was a, a real void in that music. And so, yeah, people really liked it. And then Satchel was actually the guitar player for a long time. And we did steel Panther and atomic punks at the same time. And uh, that was the way we really carved out our niche in Steel Panther was with the tribute band. And a lot of people don't realize you guys paid your dues, right? You built your way up. I mean, this is not a, you know, it's not like a little band that just jumped on stage and suddenly playing shows. You've paid your dues and you guys deliver the goods. I've seen you guys. You guys are pros, man. And musician wise, yeah, there is a sense of humor to it all. But music, music wise and vocal wise, you guys are like tearing it up. Yeah, we're not a flash in the pan, and nor did we have super success right out, out of the gate. I mean, we had to really work it. And prior to even putting on a record, we played Mondays at the Viper Room, Wednesdays in San Diego, and Fridays and Saturdays in Vegas for 10 years straight. Yeah, That was our schedule. And we, I mean, we worked out all the kinks years and years of playing in front of 20 people, 300 people. And, you know, it, it just, it, it's a, it didn't happen overnight and I don't believe in luck. I believe that work puts you in a place to have luck. Yeah. So I guess I do believe in luck, but I mean, hard work is luck is a result of hard work is what I'm trying to say. And we've done that and we still are a hardworking band. I mean, we've done more shows, put it this way, the house of blues in Hollywood. We played the very last show there before they tore it down. And we were the band that played there more than any other band in the history of the whole House of Blues since it was in Hollywood Boulevard or Santa Cruz. Crazy, crazy. Did you ever, I mean, I, my next question would have been, did you ever think it would be as big as this? No, we were just happy to fill the House of Blues in Hollywood. That was a major goal for us. So we thought, wow, man, could it get any better than this? And it, it did. And it just keeps getting better but you know it didn't happen like right away it didn't like we didn't peak right away it's been a slow trajectory to what we're doing so you know we're able to appreciate the hard work that it takes to get where we're at and we don't take it for granted and when we go do a show we put everything into it that we have all right so last question your favorite song off the new album well i really love god the pussy that was a song that was really really tough for me to sing the first time around and the second time and then the third time I came back in after that voice surgery and my voice was back 110% and I got in there and I sang the fuck out of it and I really love that song it means a lot to me and it's really an autobiography basically would you ever do a, a serious album like a serious lyrical album music wise you guys are serious but a serious lyrical album like with some serious content well, I gotta tell you, dude. People ask us that all the time, and and this is a serious record for us. All right, okay, I mean, I'm right. no joking. Okay. It really is. This is who we are, man. All right, all right. All right. And no. that's what people don't get. You know, they just don't get it. They think, oh, well, they, one day they're gonna do a serious record. Man, we've been doing serious records since we started, right. and this is us being serious. And you know, that's just who we are, and that's why I think people appreciate us and dig us because we're not changing. Just to get on the radio or to fit a, you know, some sort of box. All there right. is no box for Steel Panther. We do what the fuck we want to do. Heavy Metal Rules, September 27th. I know on the 26th you're doing a showcase, or not a showcase, but you're doing a launch of the record, right? Uh, and you guys are ripping right through uh, the West Coast all the way, I guess, to the South, the East. You're crisscrossing North America, basically. That's what I'm seeing. So very cool. Yeah, Look out for all the everything. dates. Yeah, very cool, buddy. But Michael Starr, uh, Steel Panther, pick up the album September 27th. Thank you so so much for being on the show. Thank you.